Glad to hear, guys. Well, thanks for joining. Um, today we're doing Justice, D-A-N-C-E. And uh, yeah, again, let me know if the video or the audio is cra goes crazy because it's kind of a big session. I started remaking certain parts. Um, it's not a full track remake, but it's more just like, you know, to break down if you want to know what's going on with the bass line or the chords or want to learn how to play it or what's going on with the vocals, things like that. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I'll play a little bit uh, for those joining us a couple minutes late. And, uh, yeah, and then we'll get we'll jump in. Starting in my DAW here. You can follow along. Handily marked sections. Not too hard. Uh, I don't know what hard. I mean, you know, Palace. Like, that's a good question. It's an important track, so it was a fun one for sure. I first heard this when I was in Montreal, like on the rig not even radio. I don't even know. I was at my friend's house. I was actually in the middle of this crazy bike trip. I cycled from Vancouver, where I'm from all the way that's on the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean and then we were like halfway just over halfway in Montreal and I heard this at my friend's house and I played it like I swear like 10 times in a row I think it must have been on YouTube or something um, but yeah I don't know if, if anyone uh, remembers when they heard this song or any memories of the song I'd be curious like you know do you, do you hear it in a show or like how did yeah what's everyone's first memory of this song before we jump in it made an impression on me clearly Party tight. Vancouver, Vancouver in the house. Yeah, Red Boy, that's, that's cool, man. I was just there a couple months ago. My family's still there. Is it alright up there? It's like chill out. I guess it's not the US, right? People aren't going crazy. Yeah, and then you move. I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm from Vancouver. Uh, I've been in LA for like three years. Yeah, I think this is my third year in LA. What up, Nick? Nick on the house. Nick is a crazy DJ, excellent producer. Genesis Noir. Yeah, the CD. I remember that. Palace. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, let's talk about that. Like, it was. You know, one of the anthems of this whole generation, right, of music. You've had Blog House and you've had, like, coming up. What's up, Quesadilla? Thanks for joining. Yeah, first, I didn't even know Hard was around then. That would have been crazy, though. I imagine you had, like, Crookers. What's up, Zero STXL? Welcome to Song Breakdown Sundays. Yo, Quesadilla, I can't even imagine that first Hard LA. Where, where was that at? Oh, dope. Yep. Love the shrine. Definitely seen a few shows. I think the last time I was there was maybe like the uh, Porter Robinson uh, digital. Shoot, what's it called? His, his other project? The USC? Yeah, I like that menu a lot. That was crazy. They had so much production. All right. Let's get into it. So, Justice DNCE. A um, little bit of background. I mean, it was the second single from them. I didn't actually realize that. First from their album. Cro oh, right. Their first single would have been the We Are Your Friends, I guess, with Simeon, which uh, I wanted to play, but my YouTube was just kind of messing up. But that's also a classic um, the year before. And it went to UK Dance number one and US Dance number 10 on Billboard, supposedly. But I feel like it was a lot bigger than that. And every single DJ was, uh, yeah, poor, yeah, that was a good show. Waters, Waters was on, was the first single. Maybe Nick, yeah, I would, I believe you. I feel like you know way more about justice than I do. Um, yeah, we're gonna get into it. I think Palace, they talked about that a little bit. Um, 
let's just dive right in. So the intro, uh, verse and chords. So I kind of like messed. I went with like some kind of janky sounding stuff today because uh, it's a larger session and my able my computer's been so so. So I'm just kind of playing replaying the parts with as much Ableton gear as possible, not worrying too much about the sound. But um, so you kind of have this first chords, right? Uh, let me see if I can get this to go. Uh, so it's it's an A, it's an A major. I'll show you if you want to jump in here and look at what's happening. Um, Cause like an A, a is it you know one three five. Let me see if I can run. Well, so the interesting thing is like it's the four chords of the verse, starting right off, are really similar to what we were talking about last week with Destiny's Child. When I said you go one six, and, and Destiny's Child goes like. Right. So this uses is one six four five in the verse, which is like and then down to the six. So. Right. It just has the passing chord. This is the verse. Um, the bra the brass patch, which I you know just kind of faked it here. So. That's literally just that that funny polysynth, which I think is probably like a Jupiter if they had access to that. Uh, talking about your question, Palace. Um, there's some good. There's some good. Uh, Vintage, what, what's it called? Um, plastic. Arturia makes some good stuff in that vein. It's. I feel like it's either like a Jupiter eight, or maybe like a like a like a Juno sixty or something. It's something in that line. There's um. I have a suite, but I have to plug in like a hard drive to use it, which I'm not doing today, obviously. Um, and it's all right. It's kind of like these. It's called like classics or something like that. Arturia also makes good clones of that stuff. Um, And then there's another layer underneath, which I'm just using this kind of shitty brass patch on like roads. So, uh, so, whoops. Like A, A major, right? Then that's an E major, but it just walks down the bass, which is like, but, but you put the G uh, sharp on the bottom. So I'll, you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop this open here so that you guys can like take a look at it real quick. E, ma e major again. So this is the same thing with different voicing, right? D major, B major for the, it's like a passing chord. But it, it starts the whole song on like a really happy, really happy, positive vibe, right? Like, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a major, there's not a lot of songs that are in major keys nowadays. And so, right? like if you just heard that for a whole song, you'd be like, what the heck? This is kind of like, I don't know, um, kind of corny, right? The only thing happening there is like in the drums, like it's some other super uh, verbed out kind of uh, squashed drum. If you listen to f listen for it. Right. So that is quite simple. I just threw some like real like you can get there pretty quick. Just like it, with a gate. It it, it kind of it's kind of just there to like you know move the track along. It's not trying to you know letting you know letting you know they're in there. So yeah, that's pretty simple. That's the verse. Let's get into the pre. Right. So let's listen to the to the pre first. Just 
Right. So there's this is when all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is like a disco track because they went from this like chill halftime thing, four four kick. They introduced that bass. Okay, let's stick with the let's start with the with the poly first. L listen to the the high synth. New chords, right? So let's yeah, let's we'll start with the chords. So major, D major, and then it flattens out, which makes it D minor. And then there's a weird chord here. Zero, yeah, sorry about that. The, my audio card, sound card might be a bit messed up, but let me, uh, hopefully, uh, Hopefully it'll be all right. Let me know if it like if it gets really staticky or anything like that. So yeah, uh, it's again it's a sort of descending thing. The part that I would highlight in this in this pre, which is super funky, before we get into the bass, which drives the whole song, is that they go. So your pre. Remember, we started with this major thing. It's very like Mozart. Um, that whole Cross album has got a lot of classical influence, and that's super, it's almost rigid, right? It's not funky at all, and it's setting you up, right? It's sort of a fake out. Then the pre, the pre starts with another major chord, the D major, and it flattens out to the D minor. And when you go from major to minor and stay in the same, uh, same key, that dramatically changes the mood, right? It goes, it goes from happy to sad is the obvious way of putting it. You can go from minor to major as well. Um, another example, uh, a classic example is of that would be um, Hall and Oates. I can't go for that. So it's like, um, right? Uh, I can't go for that. And it's just kind of like sitting on the sort of sad part. And then in the chorus, you know, so they keep going major, minor, major, minor, and they're just kind of messing with you, and that that build that can build tension. It's not super easy to go back and forth very easily, but it is something to note um, in this case, and you probably notice it more in dance music. I use that technique a fair bit myself. Um, let's get into the bass, because the the kick is just a house kick here. Right? <laughs> Right, so I think what we'll do is warp it and then bring it down. So we can just like hear, I don't know if we've got any bass players in here, uh, but I'm not a bass player. I, I just listen to a lot of, uh, you know, disco and house and stuff like that. And that's sort of learning to replay a bass and like where the notes are and where the missing notes are and the ghost notes and such are is really what has taught me a lot of like, what I what I use today in my own music. So, whatever, anything disco chic, or d d d Daft Punk, uh, Sister Sledge, all that stuff. So we're slowing it down so we can kind of figure out like where where all the notes are. Okay, so I think even though I've got it, um, let me see where we at. I don't know, the latency might be a bit too much for me to play along. Okay, so, I'll, I mean, I'll show it to you. I didn't actually, wasn't smart enough when I broke this down to slow it down this much, but I think I used that, that technique in some other parts. It's always, it can be helpful to figure out what it's playing. So it's it's really about where the because let's say you have you know if you're playing it straight, um, you would just go like like or not even that you would you would just go kind of like a sixteenth note thing, but this is like really just kind of clapping uh, a lot of like figuring out where the where the bass notes should go 
is understanding like 16th notes and assuming, for example, um, cause there's no, there's not a lot of, of different notes in here. It goes, uh, yeah, zero. Um, this is like, I'm not all, all this, all these, um, sounds I'm using are kind of just mostly stock Ableton things because I need to keep my CPU down because my computer is from like 1995. So yeah, it's not going to be exact, of course, but uh, we're trying to get like some of the vibe. Uh, this is a contact Scarby bass plugin, which is pretty good. I was using Guitar Rig on it and then um, I wasn't sure if my session was going to load, but Guitar Rig is pretty dope since I'm just using this Ableton bass roundup thing for a little bit of low end. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you got questions about the sound, about my sound, I mean, go ahead. We're we're not definitely we're definitely not going like all the way in on sound design today, because let's 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 face it, like their bass sound here is pretty untouchable, and I'm sure people have spent years trying to figure out how to recreate that. But focusing on the bass line, what it's playing. <laughs> first thing I want to say that, uh, that I think is important about this bass line is it's just three notes uh, that he's playing. So, uh, hang on, let me. Sorry, four. So it's literally just D, C sharp. So it's really about the funk within that. Like whatever, right? So um, that is essentially what you're doing. And and what I mean before we jump back into it is with the sixteenth notes, if you don't like clap, you go half time and you're clapping like so if it's uh, I'm literally clapping into a mic, this is ridiculous. So let's just solo it. Right, that's that's on the that's on the one, and then if you went, if you if you're going half, you would be every every clap can be where one of those notes goes, and if you start to get smaller into smaller subdivisions like a uh, sixteenth notes and stuff, right? That's wh that's where those other notes go. It's very like. Uh, Bernard Edwards uh, from Chic. All right, so let's move on from the bass. We have an idea of what, what's coming. It's super funky. Uh, they have that rhythm guitar. What's up, JP? Yeah, we're talking about the bass line. I mean, this whole track is really about the pocket. And um, I know you're like a piano guy, so it's really about breaking it down to subdivisions like 16th notes, 32nd notes, and there's only four notes in this in this progression. Uh, and once again, I have silenced it, so it's. Oops. So it's it's about figuring out where the space is and where you're gonna mute it. But da 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 da. Anyways, you get. I mean, you've heard it. So that's kind of the secret. With it's easy to say, but with funk and bass lines, is know when not to play because he's not playing a bunch of notes, even though it sounds like it. There's only four notes. Let's get into the rhythm guitar, which is this part, and they hint at it in the pre. This part. Right. So that's that hints at because the whole the whole track is really other than you know the chorus. What drives the groove is that bass line and the rhythm guitar. So that's just kind of hinting us back to where we're gonna go in the drop, which I'll run real quick. So let's just go to the track from the pre into the first drop. Right. So, uh, like I said, this this rhythm guitar. Uh, I just chopped like a guitar sample, but uh, 
so what I have, it's just got some like smash processing. It's not exactly the real sound. So that if you are following along at home, is like a. Uh, how am I? Oh yeah, here we go. It's just sitting on the A. And then it just kind of bring brings us back to where we're gonna go in the drop, which I'll show you the chords real quick. Let's start with, let's actually start with the piano chords because that's the easiest part, part to start with and then we'll get into the bass. Okay, so remember how we started the whole track with this A major stuff? A, uh, so you think the track is an A major before it goes to the pre, which is a sad D minor thing. The, the drop is basically in the same key, but it's the relative minor. So let me make sure I have my thing armed. Right, so if I show you. A major, but uh, the drop which is soloed, yeah. it's, it goes, uh, sorry, let me find those pianos for you, because that'll be better. What up, Maddie? Welcome to the chat. We're just breaking down relative minors. We got the drop, we're at the drop in uh, D-A-N-C-E. So uh, it goes from a minor, a minor to the, p the piano should be, and don't look at my MIDI here, um, I have a weird voicing, but it's basically trying to be, oh, come on, bro, just like work, wait, it's like I froze everything and then maybe my shit's not going to work now, okay, let's unfreeze this one, can you tell I'm like paranoid, uh, oh, I know, what's up? Ungroup. One second. What? You're not hearing that. I'm not hearing that. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so we got. So. What I, what I meant by it goes to the, the relative minor is, so let's say you have, oh my god. Why did I not? Oh, it's because I have mutes. I've got automation for the mutes, right? Right. So i got to put my cursor here. So A major, right? Verse, drop, F sharp minor, if you're a little bit familiar with music. So it's in the same key, babe. Walking it down, so the bass is like, and then it resolves and goes back to to the one, which is super disco. I mean, all all disco all is all just walking uh, note by note or semitone by semitone through your bass line, very similar to the pre, which which uh, hinted at that. So these are the chords. Yeah, Adam, um, I think it's just like my computer freaking out. Um, sorry about that. Welcome. Uh, and that in my space bar is 25 pounds. I'm working out my thumbs. Uh, so we're, at, we're working on the, on the chords and the drop.
I'll get into the synths right there because the reason I have that automation is because the piano cuts off. They do a lot of sample chopping in this track. Even if they recorded it, they just mute shit, which gives it a very jagged feel and raw feel. So that's why my piano wasn't working when I thought it was supposed to work. That's not the not the patch, but this is just kind of like accentuating the same thing that they're they're doing. Uh, accentuating the same thing that I gotta remember what, what my chords are. That's what that basically what that's doing there. Uh, that little fun. It's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of layers there. The main part to pay attention to before we again before we jump into the bass is the introduction of the string. So it it, it follows and accentuates the lead vocal, which uh, I mean I might as well talk about the lead vocal now because I only found about this today. That vocal is from, it's actually a sample. So let's see if I can load YouTube. And if I can't, then I'll just play it into the mic. So it's from a Britney Spears, it's a melody from a Britney Spears um, song. That is not a Britney Spears song, that's a Justin Bieber song. Uh, where is my, oh, here we go. Here we go. I think my sound card is set up different, so I'm just gonna mic, mic it. This is uh, Britney and Madonna, uh, "Me Against the Music." Right, so we all got that, right? Uh, that's technically not a sample. That is a uh, interpolation because it's re redone, replayed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm not gonna go all all the way in on the samples, but uh, I will go back to this guitar because I forgot I was already focused on the chorus. Um, this really important guitar, which is gonna play a massive role in the track. <laughs> Right, so I have I have this here. But I was thinking about it, and um, I actually think that it sounds a bit like another another guitar uh, in another song. So this is actually the beginning of a s of track from that same time oh. right so if you don't know that one that's chromio's needy girl and uh there's some talk of that this guitar i've processed it a little bit differently here um so there's that Hang on a second. Let me play it for you again. So this is. And then I'm gonna unfreeze this and just like remove this. Oh no! Sorry, I didn't mean to flatten. I meant to unfreeze and lose this stupid thing. So this is a, the the tip here is that this is a wrong note in the key of this track. It's like a C. It's a sort of a C thing going on, and um, 
and it shouldn't be in the track. But if you just put this. Anyways, so that's that's what's up. That's where that guitar comes from. Uh, and I don't know if the rest of the guitar in this track is played or sampled from this from this needy girl track. Uh, but yeah. So back to our chorus. This is the meat of the track. This is going to be where we're spending our time. So we know where that do the dance uh, or that ba -da 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 com comes from now. And uh, the string is basically resampled. So I did this like really quick, but I'll show you how I would actually do it. And I'll play on MIDI. So if you're scoring at home, the I could just convert it to MIDI. Oh, you know what I'll do right now is you can hear it in the way that they chop it, that it's not, uh, that it's used like a, an old school sampler because you can hear it the way it cuts off. Like here. Especially at the end. So the way that you would do like an effect like that without getting super, super producery. Let's take that and just bounce it, right? And then I'm gonna use it in a sampler and see if we can get like a little bit closer. Uh, okay, so now we've got our single hit. Uh, now I'm going to put it in a simpler, which is the best. Uh, oops, too much. So then you have. I'll bring this down so you can believe that I'm playing it. Oh, I, w I mean, I wasn't playing it. Where is it? Here we go. String sampler. So it cuts off. I forgot to turn this to monophonic. That's w that's basically what I think they're doing there. Is they just used one sample and then stuck it in the sampler and replayed it. Um, if you want to know what the chords are or the notes, let's just do it. Oh, that doesn't work. So it's like I'll, I'll record it and then you can look at it. It is, yeah. Uh, cut corners, you're you're correct. That's very much a new jack style where they just cut bunt chunks of things and put them in the sampler and use entire chords and pianos. Pianos are tough to push too much or else it gets janky, but with strings, definitely. What's up, Lanny? Lanny in the house. So then now I've got my original string group, which I don't need, I think, and I'm going to use this new string sampler um, on my track. So, ah, my latency, right? Let me just fix the timing on this. Bump, bump. Alright, my playing is off. You get the idea. I mean, I would adjust, you know, the velocities and the release times and etc. But um, that's what's happening there. I'm just gonna freeze that so that we don't have to have any CPU, and we'll continue. So we've been uh, uh, ignoring some of the important parts. 
which are the guitar, rhythm guitar, and the bass, because this groove is just crazy, right? Um, I mean, you can listen to my version. Again, sorry about those poly synths being fucking terrible. So let's let's just focus on what's going on in the bass, um, which I redid. I wanted to do the live for you guys, but my CPU would not let me. Um, uh, right now I've got uh, two basses, like a kind of a really hard. Let me give you some drums with that. I'm going to consolidate this so that we can all just look at it and enjoy. Is a lot of so they use a lot of slides, and uh, there was a Nick bike actually just put me on um, to they did like a podcast with Mix the Masters, and I was listening to it in the shower like half an hour ago. I wish I'd listened to it before, but I mean, five minutes in, one of the questions was like, "How do you do your bass?" Which is hilarious because I guess you know, imagine any interview with Daft Punk is like, "How do you do Daft Punk bass?" But anyways, uh, and then they're like, "Well, we use a lot of um, yeah." Nick puts that link up. But um, I only listened to about five minutes of it because I had to get ready for this, and they <laughs> kind of answered the question I was looking for. And I was like, maybe I can make this bass sound a little bit like theirs just real quick. But anyways, um, yeah, Fady, like, uh, it seems like they talk for 90 minutes. It, it seems like a really cool interview, and I've heard other people reference it already, you know, so I'm going to jump in on that. But talking about just the um, – so what they did, they used a lot of samples, and they used, as you can tell, with the Chromio thing that, that we just w went over, maybe. And um, another thing that they did was they used GarageBand bass. So I think they used a lot of different bass and, like, different single notes. And then slides, like, he, they were talking about even using slide samples. So this sli uh, slide here, I was looking at some people play this on YouTube. I'm like, it's, it looks really hard. People play it pretty well. Uh, but it's very hard. So it's, it is much easier to program, I think. Um, so these slides are all programmed in because I don't know how to do that. I don't play bass. This is actually an old cut corners I, uh, uh, bass stem that he recorded for me back when we were roommates in Vancouver. He recorded um, some bass for my Aluna George remix. So this is like a long time ago. But I found I needed some slides and I wasn't feeling, yeah, Matt. Um, I was I have my own slides in my sample pack. And I was like, these, these aren't the one. And I had some on Splice. It was like cashmere. I was like, this is not like the right vibe. So I found some of yours, this old stuff. Right? There you are, bass live. Yeah, that's Cuddy, Cut Corners, Vancouver in the house here. So I just like repitching them within the bass line. Anyways, it adds a lot of funk to it. Um, I mean, I'm, I could try to replay this, but Jesus Christ. Like, uh give me a click here okay there we go Oof. why are you not playing i don't oh no it's in the wrong record right. fuck uh i mean it's a lot it's a lot of a lot of <laughs> It's thanks, Adam. It's a tough baseline to get. I was like, you know, maybe I can just play it back in, but I'm I'm glad I didn't try to do that. So let's and and the way you would figure this out, the way I figured this out is just by listening bar at a time, bar to bar at a time. And I think I did slow it down. So one way to also do that if it's a really busy track. and you're trying to find it so you're trying to find like oh what's the root note right and and what's easy what's easier for me it's okay well I'll, I'll post that link up if uh if someone texts it to me later on but i think it's just mix mix the masters or something like that for that justice interview uh so again if you're trying to find like the the main the the first part and like figuring out a baseline is figuring out hey like what are the notes and we as we went over 
Oh, my remix. Oh, my Luna George. Right. It thinks you're posting like SoundCloud spam. It's an old like edit I flipped of a Luna Georgia outlines and uh, I got s some. Why is the screen zoomed? I am on a Mac. Um, I don't know if do you want like more Ableton on this? Like we can we can do that. I can I can go right in. I thought you wanted to look at my amazing auto filter chain, but we can just do this. Hang on. Yeah, sorry about the the mod bot. I, it's definitely something I can revisit. Let me know if that's better. I mean, if you want to see what effects, the effects are not crazy. Palace, I may make this available later on for subscribers. So people should be like subscribing because I just made affiliate last week. So thank you for following. Um, oh, oh, on a whole. Ovanic, sorry, man. It, I don't know. Is, is this better? Do you guys want this Zoom or do you want to it to go back, Ableton to go back to where it was like um, sh zoomed out? It doesn't, it, it really doesn't matter to me. All right, I'll, I'm gonna leave this for now. So again, you're trying to figure out the main notes within the baseline, right? And it takes a while and that's fine. So you're, you're just walking down uh, from F sharp, E. I mean, again, with most disco, st most disco stuff, it's walking down or walking up. It's usually moving one or two uh, semitones you know, um, at, at tops, like, uh, uh, what would be chic? Everybody dance, everybody dance. Right. Oh. Um, or, uh, like, I guess we were talking about, I was saying that this bass line, the more I, I listened to it, I thought that, uh, <laughs> thanks Adam. Um, you're right, Lonnie, definitely got to have some moderation. Uh, everything in moderation, right? My grandfather would be so proud. Uh, so when I said that this bass line was like, the more I listened to it, even when I listened to my version of it, once I got the bass line right, I was like, this kind of like goes really hard. And I didn't realize that that was why one of like the core of the track, aside from the incredible production and, this and, the, and the vocals. And I was like, you know, I think this is maybe as good as any bass line Daft Punk has done. And uh, Vaughn from Oliver replied, and I'm not surprised because he said it, several times before he's at Voyager Daft Punk is like the best baseline ever um, and uh, I mean he's not wrong it is great uh, but it plays a lot more notes and it's kind of like I don't know I'm not gonna turn that it's like Anyways, so that's like the Voyager baseline, and I'm like, it's good, it's really good, but I feel like if I can learn it, like, I mean, I don't know this 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 stuff this this justice bass is like, if anyone doesn't, I, I now I have to play this song because it's like you guys are, if you don't know the song Voyager, then you're gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about that? <sighs> I didn't want to make this like a whole baseline chat, but now I'm gonna try and open iTunes. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's let's see if this if this works. some other shit going on there but like what up cyclist in the house um <laughs> so my point is that this th this one holds its own um let's let's go back to hearing that amazing bass the other part of, of this which is easier to figure out is that rhythm guitar most rhythm guitar is just playing on the same yeah, Quesadilla, you're absolutely right. Voyager is a super fun. I think I learned one cycle of eight bars, but it has different variations um, that totally mess with you. And I would recommend anyone that wants to learn bass or is a producer or wants to funk their stuff up, um, you know, just try to learn that. Like, it's where the mutes are. Adam just takes practice, man. It took me a while. Uh, so this rock guitar, not rock guitar. I'm looking at the thing, at the rhythm guitar. Oh, hang on.
So this whole track is about the bass and the rhythm guitar, but most rhythm guitar, at least, at least in my experience, it's just like da 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 da. You know, like cyclist over here is just playing like the same chord like on like the downbeat. So this one is th this one is doing way more. Uh, And uh, it, it kind of does this. I'll solo it for a second. Same thing er every four. I think so. I don't know. I had like a stupid slide. Oh, I was combining slides. Don't don't that looks like a cat getting stepped on or something. But it's like uh, it, once again, it's just like it's just sitting on the root note. Yo. My bad, guys. We're back. All right, we're back in the game. Um, so you're hearing that that pocket play against the rock guitar, right? Give you some drums. And so, and th like this breakdown has taught me that rhythm guitar does not have to be as straight. It can be super funky, even though you're playing like one note. He goes down to the seven, right? Just the F sharp, which is the root note, and then down to the E, and lets the bass lets the bass line do all the the melodic work, right? But he's going F E. So if you like, if you could just go. So if you were like an EDM house producer, you would just be like. Right? That's just playing it super, super straight. Because that's, you know, if, if you don't execute the funk well, it's, it's terrible. So, look, I mean, he's doing um, every root note and then, or they're doing F, um, every root note, and then adding fifth so that the C sharp here is like a, uh, or down, right? And then you go, so that if you go to the root note E, then to the B, and just walks down, and it's just, just little, little, little hits and ghost notes. But it don't. Right, so so we're on that. The piano thing, he pushes the piano in front of the beat. So it's like if you're playing here, we'll just we'll just clap it out, because clearly that's working. They make you do this when you're learning piano and like five years old, right? But uh straight and then pushed. Muted, straight, pushed, straight. So, um, like, if you want to find samples in my music where this is pretty useful, uh, uh, useful, or I use this technique, uh, Mar Mar Vista, I do it. Uh, so I don't even remember. Oh, jeez. 
going to play it. I mean, I, sorry. I mean, I, I thought I was going to be able to play it, like, quick, but um, I think I probably did the same thing on So Over It, where it's just like... Yeah, so you put you push like the second and the fourth. You can push all of them, but then you just have a, a track with keys that are just off. Uh, so yeah, that adds a little bit of energy and push to like you know kind of hurries the, the the hook along. Thanks, Adam. Very kind. It's so fu it's so funny that the drums come in there because like uh, we we're not even really think the whole track is just kick and snare which is why that group has to be just on point but he there are some hats here which is funny it's just like this in the second half which I mean is, I mean they're just very basic and and mine are mixed way too high like listen to this from here it's like a EQ for Mike. Hey, you know, I'm gonna bring mine way down. I, I left some of the mixing like more traditional, just so you could hear what was, well, so you could hear what was going on. But I feel like they just have tiny bit going on. This is my hat channel. It's like this. Oh, you can't see my, uh, oh, you can't see it. Um, I just realized that my window capture is like messed up. Uh, I gotta fix my Logi. Where's my Logitech? Dang, am I like not in here? I d I'm just looking at my OBS right now. Window capture, restream chat is good. Window capture. Okay. Where's my, weird. Hang on, I'm gonna unplug. My camera, so y'all can see me, my beautiful face. Mm. All right. Wah. Nope. Not it. All right. I guess we're just going without the uh, the cam. That's all right. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about here is they use they gate they gate a lot like the pianos they, they turn off um so that tag at the end the synth tag which i played probably really offensively to everyone uh this where that just kind of it's almost like a fill with strings the technical div difficulties guys say eh? um i think the thing you're hearing actually is uh the ott on it but um I'll, i'm just gonna run through the rest of the arrangement real quick here since we're at an hour and i think we kind of covered like the base that the bit that the base is crazy so the post is the same as the drop Oops. with a lot of with a lot of a lot of stops which i'm just drawing in with automation So I'll show you. I'll show you right now. It's just on off on that whole thing, because it's that's all that they're doing. Let's 
same thing. Second drop. What's the classic move? The, the reverse. I like the reverse piano there because they're not giving us that passing chord. That's okay. So that's something I forgot about is um, they left out one of the passing chords in the piano up until up until later on. So that's that's here. So the chords here, they just blank it usually for that string fill. Right. The mute. The totally. So, so here, instead of instead of a passing chord, they do that string fill, send the fill, and then here they finally give it to you. Sort of. So that that last that last passing chord, which is, uh, it's an A minor thing going on. It just it, it's a resolves it resolves two one, so the whole bass line goes like one seven six. I don't know, six two one, if because you're assuming the you know the root in the in the um, hook is uh, F sharp five. That is a uh, the the last chord. It's omitted. It's just a G. It's it's a A flat or G sharp minor seven omitting the three. So it would be. I'm in the wrong window. Boo -doo -doo -doo. God damn it. So. Wait, I think it fits. I don't resolve to two that often. I mean, it's not. So let's say, like we were talking about, say my name using the same uh, this a similar progression from the verse. It goes one four, but it goes seven. It should have gone like a say my name, say, oh one six. Say my name, say my name. So if you did the same thing and resolve to the two. I'm not going to try and shoehorn say my name. If you want to learn how to play Destiny's Child, you can go back into the VODs. It'll be up for a couple weeks, and then you can subscribe. Uh, what's up, Hood Boy? Roger in the house. Uh, we are breaking down the post chords where they've added that new passing chord, which is what is messing me up a little bit. But with automation, right? So you automate everything. Like here, here they're automating, automating, automate uh, off of the string fill. Right, so you have no verb. Yo, addictive key's pretty good. I mean, it's just I. What's funny is I had M1 on this, and then like when I opened the session today, it was like you have no license, even though I purchased it. And I was like, all right, well, I guess we're using addictive keys today. It's okay. Right, and then it mutes. This is my piano group. More mutes, which yeah, classic DJ move. Great post. That's the first time we get that chord, which is really nice because we've never had that beautiful passing resolution chord. You're right, Matt. Then he br he brings that funky ass bass line back here. <laughs> Yo, Korg is great. I need to get that working because I use some stuff on. There's some like deep cuts on that. Korg M1. It's like thirty bucks, thirty-five bucks. I might, I would even buy it again. Is how good. You know, I would spend another thirty dollars if mine doesn't work. Right, so he brings that funk back. Monopoly, I don't know that one, man. I gotta check that out. So we're back to that. Same, just a little bit more hats. 
for you latecomers, I'm going to give you that bass again. I mean, it's just it's just ba crazy pocket. And uh, with the drums. It's really just about where you're playing the notes and where you're not playing the notes. And that sounds really stupid. It's about playing the notes and taking your time to get back to the root note, which they don't do here. But again, Daft Punk does. They always like dancing around the root. James Jameson does it. It's like, like, um, grunt. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, 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 and I need to like sample Chromio and I need to do some other stuff. So it's like if you dance around back to the root, that's a, that adds some flex on your bass. And I think Roger, you would know that already. Um, but that is a way to get a bit funkier on your bass, knowing when to mute it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep it moving. And do the rest of this arrangement. Oh, thanks, Raj. Okay, so th this is the the bridge. I'm using mostly like all like uh, native Ableton stuff because my CPU is crazy. Not too playing too many notes in a major way. That's yeah, man. Uh, KCD, like I mean, this this is a crazy. It's a crazy bass line. That's why I was saying maybe it rivals Voyager because there's not a lot of notes happening. But the fact that I'm kind of messing with my version of it with these like, you know, couple hours, just some like stock ass drums and just like just that just shows you the pocket. And Roger, I, I don't know if you were here for this part, but it's really about that rock guitar, um, rock guitar, <laughs> the rhythm guitar. And it's just playing. I chopped it on a on a crappy like little uh, uh minor key oh you got jokes you guys are just fucking with me so that's that's that rhythm guitar which is doing way more than you usually do at least as far as i'm concerned in tracks like sitting on the root but that is a huge key to making this Right? That's like, you can't even see me. Like, I don't have my, my shit going because my camera died. But uh, anyway, so we're, we're let's go to the bridge. It's a pocket, though. The fills are in the pocket. Yeah. Do it. Do it, Matt. This is, uh, is that their bridge or my bridge? I don't remember this instrumental. Maybe I only heard like video edits. I guess they have an instrumental bridge, which is just the whole pianos and like no bass. They use they use like four OTTs on their master clearly. This is a, if you want the chords, rip them for your next splice pack. Not my chords. I agree. Yeah, that the bass is all mid range, and it's about getting that tone. I just left the low end because I'm like, my my version is sus with no low end, so just so you can feel it. Um, and then they bring. Let's keep it going. It's the same as the other post, but with here they do four a four bar drop a four count drop up four. Right, which is also DJ move. Um, okay, so this is what we've heard all this before. Then we're gonna get to some some new stuff finally, I think. Mm, this is all the same. The outro is different.
I like this like lazy ass. Now, if you did this in 2020, you're like a lazy ass. You're just like, how about nothing on the first count? I do it sometimes because I'm lazy with fills. <laughs> This is just everything back in there. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is punch that string in now, since I haven't been able to do it yet. We sort of resampled my chop string into one hit. If you're just joining us, we're breaking down justice. Uh, dance, D-A-N-C-E, 13 years ago, super classic. Uh, did I delete my... My voice was oh, I froze it. Okay. Nope. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this because, like, I. idea but I, i'm just doing this for more um accuracy because i'm pretty sure they they used that sampler effect with w a one shot oh latency what the ba -da -da -bum -bum. You know what's also funny is I could just copy this because I'm Okay, that was stupid. I should just I should just fixed it. You get the idea. What I'll do is I'll mute this because I don't want to do it for the rest of it. And then we can just compare them. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, we're gonna hit the outro. here in the outro which is i can really appreciate because i always love more chords but it's just uh i think it's that's a sick i don't know what um synth that is if anyone knows it's something maybe like a dave dave smith or something um they recorded this so the the vocals on this are a london choir i mean you can google that stuff and it was executive produced by a guy that worked with Ed Banger named General Mitty. He found the choirs and was suggesting them. And they, we kept going to London, like trying to check out, try these different kids' choirs, which was inspired by an old Larry Levan remix that used kids on a, that that had kids recorded on a, on a track. Uh, but General Mitty was a, is credited as the executive producer. There's been some like talk, someone was telling me today that it was like Thomas Bangalter wrote all of this. And I was like, that's like the dumbest conspiracy ever. But um, so, yeah, um, I don't remember where I was going. Oh, right. So they were in London recording and then they found this kid for the lead vocal. Just like that kid. A, who was a boy. He was the youngest boy in that choir. And they said that everyone else was, was singing it too straight. Imagine this song. If it, it was sung by like an opera singer, it would have no no funk, right? So they picked the youngest kid because they figured he would be like the roughest around the edges. And as they call it, blue notes, right? Like even that, that's super, uh, it's like out. You wouldn't want to tune that. It's just all vibe. Right? Anyways, um, back to this. Okay. 
so I had to use like a new thing. It's just it goes back to the um, as you can see the chords from the verse where it goes A major again, but then it goes A major and then the relative. And then that same that same um, poly synth with the same drums. That's one of my favorite parts about this this track is this ridiculous like lead. It's just meandering. It's an E an E major sort of. That's kind of dope. This is the second part. I love it. Nick, you might be onto something. Let me know what record. Um, it's probably my, my Prince knowledge could be a lot better. And then they just high pass the whole thing. But yeah, that's kind of the the whole track. We went over some of you know how the hook was sampled. More or less, the melody was interpolated from Britney and Madonna. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I, yeah, I think it's the style. I, I don't think it's sampling. I mean, if I honestly don't care when it comes to music like this, if every single piece of every single piece of audio was sampled. I mean, you still have to chop it together. It really doesn't matter that they cut Chromio's guitar or something because you could have used another guitar, and you still have to know what notes you're trying to play. It is funny that they have wrong notes in it. One wrong note in it because of it, which is what outs them, which we're going to go over one more time because I like stirring the pot. So that's my version, but the actual version is that. Woo! Oh, you know what I should do? Oh, this would be good. Wait. So we go... <laughs> Hang on. This is like I might have to edit this part out later. Um, it up. <sighs> One second. I'm trying to mess with. <sighs> Where are my strings? No, it's a guitar part. Of course it is. Okay, we're gonna not use this part. And then we'll use this part. How do I do that? Wait. What I was trying to do is like. Hey. Transition for you. You can use that in three style. I'm gonna run that one more time in case you don't know what just happened. I just using the same sample. Thanks, Isidia. Yeah, I mean, why, we'll run it back one more time because that's uh, unless you have any questions about this this record. I mean, I had some notes, but like, I okay. So the A side of this track was toxic, which is cool. Um, not this. No, that's wrong. The A side of that Britney and Madonna record which sampled which they sampled in the hook was toxic um which was written by kathy dennis who is amazing if you're not sure who that is she wrote uh katie perry kiss the girl uh can't get you out of my head kelly minogue is just a machine and had her own amazing songs um and christian from galantis so that's my link um my very small link their other link that i have to this record because the point there is that I met Kathy Dennis when I toured with Galantis last year. But my other link with this is that they recorded this all when they went back to Paris in like some shitty basement. They're talking about how the acoustics were bad. Um, and uh, in like a church, what used to be a church in Paris. And then it became a club named Silencio uh, that was bought or developed, created by David Lynch and conceptualized i think and I, and I happened to play there it's a really small spot silencio which is, is pretty cool um i mean there's just some like kitsune event or something so i got two links to this record sort of ish uh well that that is i think that i think i can take that one though 
because they recorded it in that place. So that's kind of tight. Um, I'm going to run that back for you one more time just because I think it's like really funny and you can't see like. Hey, and that's it. I think that on that note, we're going to wrap up this, uh, this session. Um, if there's any questions, we can hit those real quick. But um, yeah, I mean, if you, if, if you, I'm, I may put these up for subscribers, the sessions up for some of these breakdowns. Um, if you have an idea of what I should break down next week, let me know. Um, yeah, thank, thank you guys for tuning in. It's, it's an intimidating track, man. Oh, I got the fucking Chromio playing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. David Lynch has, uh, yeah, it's called uh, Silencio. He, yeah, he built it. Um, it's really small. It's cool. I thought it was a different story that I had about me embarrassing myself at a club in Paris, like in the historic place that like Joy Division played, but unfortunately it wasn't that. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have questions about this, any of the samples I use, I didn't really do much with the samples. Um, the bass, I'll show you the bass real quick. Um, it's, uh, it's a couple, this is like super, Bass slapper? I don't know. And I just like compress the shit out of it, and then just like your regular. The low. This is not bad. Scarby. If I could actually play guitar, right? With some processing, maybe I'll switch it out. All right. Um. Yeah. I think that's it. So until next time. Be safe. See y'all soon. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great Sunday night. <laughs>